The whistle of Titanic, the literal voice of the ship, the thing that everyone who was involved with the Titanic would hear as the vessel was beginning to head out to sea and leaving port. Yet despite the fact that the whistle was such an iconic piece of the Titanic, it's actually one of the key features of the ship that very few people talk about today. Well, you know what I have to say to that? No longer. In today's video, we're going to be discussing in detail the whistle of the Titanic. We're going to discuss what they were made of, how they worked, and what they were used for while the vessel was at sea. And as an added twist, we're actually going to discuss what happened to the Titanic's whistle during and after the sinking. There is one key thing about the whistle of Titanic's history that I think you guys are going to be surprised about. What is it, I hear you asking? Well, you're just going to have to watch this video to find out. Now, what I'm about to say may come as quite a surprise to some of you, but believe it or not, guys, the Titanic didn't just have one whistle. In fact, she had four. Each whistle was made out of bronze, and they were mounted to the top of each of the Titanic's massive funnels. Now, even though the Titanic did technically have four whistles, only two of these whistles actually worked. More specifically, it was the whistles that were mounted to the top of Funnel 1 and Funnel 2. You see, these whistles were directly connected to the Titanic steam lines, and this right here shows how the whistles worked. You see, the whistles took in steam generated by the Titanic's boilers, and they used them to emit a sound. Now, as far as I can tell, I believe the whistles that were mounted to Funnel 3 and Funnel 4 were real whistles. However, they just were not connected to the Titanic steam lines. And why would the White Star Line put these two additional whistles on the Titanic, even though they didn't work? Well, what I think happened was, was that the White Star Line thought the Titanic would look better to the public if all four funnels had whistles mounted to them and not just Funnel 1 and Funnel 2, which were actually connected to the steam lines. And honestly, I get this decision. You want your ship to look as good as possible to the public. It's also important to mention that each of the Titanic's whistles was actually made up of three smaller individual whistles. These three whistles worked together in tandem. That way, whenever the Titanic's crew blew the ship's whistle, they would work together to form one loud, audible sound that would be easily heard all around. So now let's discuss why ships like the Titanic even had whistles on them in the first place. Well, the first and probably most obvious reason why ships had whistles was simply to be used to announce a vessel's presence. That way other people and more importantly, other ships would know that, hey, there's a big ocean liner right there, you know? And the second and probably less obvious reason why ships had whistles was to, believe it or not, convey information. You would be surprised at how much information can be given from ship to ship by just using a ship's whistle. You see, while they didn't use Morse code through a ship's whistle to send out information, the way they communicated with a ship's whistle was very similar. And this was because, you see, depending on how many blasts and how long a blast from the ship's whistle lasted, well, you could use that system to communicate quite a bit of information. Now, I'm not going to be going over every bit of information that can be sent out by using a ship's whistle. However, here are a few examples. One prolonged blast from a ship's whistle means that a vessel is about to get underway and is leaving port. It's a warning to all other ships in the area to stand clear. One short blast from the ship's whistle tells a vessel that you are intending to pass on the port side. Two short blasts means you intend to pass on the starboard side. And three short blasts simply means that you are backing a ship up. Now, one of the most crucial uses for a ship's whistle happens whenever a vessel like the Titanic encounters fog at sea. You see, fog is one of the biggest obstacles that those who are operating a vessel have to contend with because it severely limits visibility for those that are on board a ship. And if those operating a ship aren't careful, they could easily collide with another ship that's in the area. They could easily hit a rock, an iceberg, whatever. So yeah, fogs are definitely a risk and you have to be careful when dealing with them. Now, the reason why a ship's whistle is important when trying to deal with fog is because what ships do is they blow their whistles every two minutes while steaming through a fog to let other ships that are within the fog know your ship's position. And 
There's one very cool innovative feature about the Titanic that I was unaware of until I was researching the topic for this video, but apparently the Titanic was actually equipped with this automatic whistleblower and the crew could actually set a timer on it and when the timer ran out it would automatically blow the Titanic's whistle. So if the Titanic encountered a fog, the ship's crew could set this timer to blow the ship's whistle every two minutes. And that really helped out the Titanic's crew because they could focus all their attention on trying to navigate the ship through the fog instead of trying to pay attention to the time and know that every two minutes they needed to blow the ship's whistle. That was a really cool innovative feature, especially for the time of Titanic. And the list just goes on and on from there. There were all kinds of things that the ship's crew could use the whistles for to give information to those that were on board or around a ship. Like at 12 p.m. every day, they would blow the ship's whistle to signify the coming of noon. And in emergency situations, a ship's whistle also came in handy. Like in the case of the Empress of Ireland sinking, Captain Kendall blew the ship's whistle after the collision with the Storstad to let the crew know that they needed to get to their emergency stations because the ship was sinking. And in the case of Britannic, Captain Bartlett blew two too long blast on the Britannic's whistle, and that was to signify that it was time to abandon ship. So yeah, a ship's whistle is definitely a very crucial piece of technology to have on board, and ships definitely shouldn't be at sea without one. Okay, so now that we've gone over all that information, let's now discuss what ultimately happens to the Titanic's whistles during and after the sinking. Now, as far as I know, the Titanic's whistles were never used once throughout the entire sinking of the Titanic. I believe the last time the Titanic's whistles were blown was at 12 noon on April 14th, 1912. Now, obviously, where the whistles were attached to the Titanic's funnels, they went down to the bottom of the ocean with the Titanic. And because the Titanic's funnels were made out of this very thin metal and they decayed really quickly, well, the whistle simply fell off of the funnels and landed on the ocean floor after the funnels deteriorated. Don't forget the whistles were made out of bronze, so they deteriorated much more slowly than the thin metal of the Titanic's funnel. And that's where the Titanic's whistles remained. They just simply were part of the Titanic's debris field for the next 81 years. That is until the year 1993, when something truly unexpected happened to the Titanic's whistle. In 1993, two companies, RMS Titanic Incorporated and a French company called Ephemer, worked together and they did a joint expedition to the wreck of the Titanic. And their goal with this expedition was to try and recover as many artifacts as possible from the Titanic's debris field. Now, guys, it's important to note that when they do these artifact retrieval expeditions, they never take anything that's inside the wreck of the Titanic. They do this because they just want to show respect to the Titanic itself and all of those who lost their lives. The only artifacts they take from the Titanic wreck site is those that were thrown from the ship while the Titanic was heading to the bottom of the ocean. And honestly, I respect that. Now, during this expedition, they successfully recovered around 800 artifacts from the Titanic's debris field. And while they were recovering these artifacts, guys, believe it or not, they actually found one complete set of the Titanic's whistle. And when I say complete set, what I'm referring to here is all three whistles that made up one whistle on the Titanic. So cool. Now, I'm not sure exactly which funnel this set of whistles came from, but anyway, when the expedition team saw it, they got so excited. So of course they decided to recover the whistles and return them to the surface. Now, once the expedition team successfully recovered the whistle and all the other artifacts from the seafloor and returned them to the surface, they were surprised to discover that the whistle was in remarkably good condition considering everything it had been through. Now, what they ultimately wanted to do with all these artifacts recovered from the Titanic was, you know, clean them up a bit, study them for a little bit, and then ultimately they wanted to put them on public display at various Titanic museums all over the world so tons and tons of people could see and learn about these fascinating artifacts. Now, in regards to the Titanic whistle, basically all they did was just clean up the whistles a little bit and make sure they were in, you know, good enough condition for public display. And that's essentially what they did with the whistles. From the year 1993 to the year 1998, this was the life of the Titanic's whistle. They were simply taken from one location to another so tons and tons of people could see them. They definitely did not try to blow the whistles or anything like that. Even though the whistles had been cleaned up, they had no idea if the whistles could handle, you know, having air blown through them to produce a sound. So yeah, they did not want to take a chance on that and destroy the whistles potentially. However, in the year 1998, a few people who worked at RMS Titanic Incorporated began to wonder, hmm, these whistles are in remarkably good condition. 
And I wonder if maybe, just maybe, these whistles may be able to blow again. That would be a really cool thing to find out. So they began to make preparations to see if this idea could become reality. Now, at the time, the Titanic whistles were located at a Titanic Museum in St. Paul, Minnesota. And what they wanted to do was find these experts on whistles and horns and stuff like that to come out and examine the whistles thoroughly to see if they were in good enough condition to blow again. Eventually, they found these guys that ran a company called the Kallenberg Brothers. The Kallenberg Brothers was a company that specialized in horns and other forms of signaling equipment, so they thought they would be perfect to come out and examine the Titanic whistles. They contacted them and asked them, hey, are you guys interested in coming to check out the whistles? And as you can imagine, they more than eagerly said, yes, we can't wait to come and see them. Now, their factory was located in Two Rivers, Wisconsin, which was roughly a four to four and a half hour drive or so away from St. Paul. So yeah, once they got word about the Titanic whistles and they wanted them to come out and see them, they quickly packed their bags, got in a car and drove to St. Paul to check out this amazing piece of maritime history. Once the Kallenberg brothers made it to St. Paul, they were quickly taken to where the whistles were stored and they began to examine them. Now, upon first glance, they thought the whistles were in remarkably good condition, same as those who had recovered them. However, after they examined them a little bit further and studied some x-rays that the museum had on the whistles, they noticed that one of the whistles had suffered a small implosion. Most likely this happened during the initial sinking of the Titanic. There was probably a small little air pocket or something within the whistle and it imploded as it sank deeper and deeper into the sea. As they studied the effects of this implosion further, they noticed that the damage wasn't too bad, and they thought that even with the implosion, the whistle may still be able to function again. However, what they wanted to do first was take the whistle back to their factory in Two Rivers, Wisconsin, because at their factory, they had the equipment they needed to properly test the whistle to see if they could handle being blown again. Now, getting the whistle back to Two River wasn't exactly a smooth process for the Kallenberg brothers. So essentially what happened was they took this panel van and they loaded the whistles into the back of it and they were simply just gonna drive it from St. Paul to Two River to work on them. However, in the middle of the drive, guys, I kid you not, they encountered this horrible ice storm. They said later that they were just so worried when they were driving through this ice storm because they're like, okay, we're right here driving these priceless Titanic artifacts through this ice storm. And if we crash and we damage these artifacts, you know, so they were just, they were like, of course this would happen now. Of course. Murphy's Law, right? But luckily, they were able to get the whistles back to Two River, and then the next day, they took them to their factory to examine them. Now, after a thorough examination, they were surprised to find that there was still some debris left over within the whistle that was placed there just from the whistles being at the bottom of the ocean. So they cleaned them out, and then after they were satisfied that the whistles were in as best shape as possible, they decided to do a low-pressure test of the Titanic's whistle. What they did was they hooked the whistle up to compressed air, and then with extremely low air pressure, they tried to blow the Titanic's whistle. And guys, I kid you not, the whistle worked. Those that were there within the factory and heard the ship's whistle blow said it was one of the most surreal experiences of their lives. Because think about it, guys, that was the first time since April 14th, 1912 that anybody had heard the Titanic's whistle blow. But yeah, after they were finished uh, testing the whistle and they deemed that everything was good to go, they then loaded the whistle back into the van and took it back to St. Paul, where the officials at the Titanic Museum were eagerly awaiting the whistle's arrival. So once the whistles were finally returned to St. Paul, the museum officials began making preparations to blow the whistles for the public for the very first time. They were gonna set up the whistles outside the museum so as many people as possible could hear the Titanic's whistle blow. And now that I think about it, you wouldn't wanna set those things off indoors anyway. It'd be really loud. But yeah, so they were going to hook the whistles up to compressed air, just like what they did at the Kallenberg Brothers Museum. They did not want to use steam for fear of damaging the whistles. And they decided to do this on February 20th, 1999. Now, when they made these plans, they expected somewhere between one to 2,000 people to show up for the event. Guess how many people actually showed up? Guys, I kid you not, 100,000 people, possibly more, showed up to hear the Titanic's whistle blow. The museum officials and the Calumber brothers who were there could not believe what they were seeing. So as the crowd gathered to listen to the Titanic's voice sing out once again, the museum officials began a countdown to blast the Titanic's whistle for the public. And guys, do not worry, I'm going to show you original footage from that event. So guys, sit back and relax as you now hear the actual whistle from the Titanic blow.
boy, I tell you guys, the first time I actually heard the Titanic's whistle blow, I just, I could not believe what I was hearing. And hearing the whistle blow, it filled me with all of these mixed emotions because on one hand, I think it's absolutely unbelievable that in the year 1999, people heard the Titanic's whistle blow and I'm so glad I got to hear that. But on the other hand, the other side of me, you know, there's something really eerie about hearing the Titanic's whistle blow. And I know I think that because of the history behind the whistle, you know, it's, it's almost like when you hear that, you're hearing a voice from the past, you know, you're hearing the Titanic cry out from 1912. And you know, it's, I don't know, in a way, I feel like actually hearing the whistle of Titanic helps me connect more to the story of the ship and all of those who were on her and lost their lives on her so long ago. And I think the fact that they were able to blow the whistle again really does a lot to honor all of those who lost their lives on Titanic on that horrible night. And I think it also does a lot to help keep their memory alive. Anyway, guys, this is Sam from Historic Travels, and I hope you enjoyed this video on the Titanic's whistle. Oh, and before I forget, I'm not sure if they're on public display anymore, but I did look it up. The Titanic whistles are currently in Buena Park, California, but as I said, I don't know if they're in a museum or what. I couldn't find that much information on it. They may just be kept in storage or something. I'm not sure. If anybody knows exactly what the status of the Titanic's whistles are, please let me know in the comments below. But yeah, anyway, guys, now I'll be watching this video and now know the incredibly interesting story of the Titanic's whistles. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave it a like. And if you're new here, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys so much. It really helps out a lot. And I'll see you all in the next one. Take care. Special thanks to Titanic Honor and Glory for providing the syncing animation for today's video. Please check out their work in the description below. Special thanks to my Captain Level Patreon supporter, Tammy Lee. Thank you so much for all the support. Oh.